Welcome in to the latest edition of MISL Weekly. My name's Nicholas Murray. Very pleased to be joined, as always, by Chris Economides. Chris, how are you doing? How's your week going? Absolutely fantastic. Fantastic, Nicholas. It's great to be down here in beautiful, sunny Florida as our brethren up in the Midwest and Northeast suffered through the uh, perils of winter storm watch number, what is it, four or five? I don't know. I, I, the last time I saw it, it was uh, up to Maximus, as, <laughs> as far as, because the, they started naming, we have named hurricanes down here, we've had named hurricanes down here for a while, but apparently they've started naming the winter storms, and one of my friends who covers the NFL was up there for the Super Bowl, his son's name is Maximus. And he was caught. My condolences to he Maximus. Was, he, he was he was caught by winter. St- he was trapped by winter storm Maximus as he was trying to get out of New York on Monday. I've so. got a name for the next storm. <laughs> What's that? Seth. Well, we ha- we'd have to get to S. We'd, we've got it goes alphabetically. Chris. Oh, is that what it is? It okay. So right. well, you know, I mean, I've, I've never been a very patient person. So I'm just going to skip all the uh, <laughs> all the other letters of the alphabet and go right to S for Seth. We we certainly know you're not a very patient person, Chris. <laughs> we've we've been listening to you on this for a couple of years. Yeah, now. There you go. But uh, we do have games to talk about. A couple of games this weekend. It was a light light schedule, but. We had two games. We had two playoff berths be clinched as the Milwaukee Wave and Baltimore Blast both assume their positions in the MISL playoffs in March. And two very interesting games. The Friday night's game between Syracuse and Baltimore, I think, played out exactly as we expected. We certainly weren't certain who was going to win. Baltimore gets the late victory on Max Ferdinand's power play goal, but this was exactly the type of game we had expected going in. It certainly lived up to the hype that we'd given it early on Friday morning. Yeah, you know, those those two teams have, have played a tremendous, you know, three games so far. I think they have a couple games left. Um, should they meet in the playoff, which is a very real possibility, it's going to be a great series, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, tied ten ten late in the late in the game. A controversial penalty called uh, late that to give Baltimore the uh, the power play. Controversial by was Syracuse it, standards. Was it, was it a controversial? Well, I, I thought, I'm not questioning. I'm just saying, you know, in, in talking to Tommy I, Tanner, I he felt it was a. I thought it was a pretty clear trip. Uh, I will always back <laughs> our referees. So, anyways, I thought it was a pretty clear trip. Great game. You know, playoff caliber game. Expect more of the same from these two teams. Uh, but Baltimore, being the defending champions that they are, came out on top. And, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a very interesting playoff. The this thing year. that I took away from the game, and that the thing that I took away from the post-game comments that I saw Tommy Ta- from Tommy Tanner not in Syracuse.com was at Lindsey Kramer's game report was this was a, Syracuse was up 10-6. to 6. They held the lead midway through the third quarter. And then they couldn't quite get the things done that they needed to after taking that lead after through and throughout the fourth quarter they started making these these small little mistakes that gave Baltimore openings to kind of hold pressure in their end get a few set pieces and find a way to to get the goals that they needed to to record the comeback victory yeah I mean, it's a great point Nicholas I think that you know Syracuse they can extend that lead by a goal or two Essentially, it's lights out. But you know what? Give give Danny Kelly and the Baltimore Blast credit. You know that's a sign of a, a of a good team, of a championship caliber team going on the road in a very tough environment, playing at the On Center in Syracuse. Um, you know, hanging tough, hanging tough, and giving them the opportunity late in the game to actually win the game. The thing I'll say about Syracuse is obviously Baltimore has players that have been through these types of games frequently. They've been through these types of games in the regular season. They've been through these types of games in the playoffs. This is the next learning step. These playoff type games are things that Syracuse is going to have to learn to play in. And I think it's really good that they're getting these games last week against Baltimore. They've got a game this weekend against Milwaukee that we'll talk about in a little bit. That they are going to have playoff type atmospheres. They are going to be playoff style indoor soccer. It is a great opportunity for them, even win or lose, to learn what it's going to take to win in the middle of March. That's a that's an excellent point. Uh, great point, by the way. Um, yeah, I mean, I think Syracuse is taking that next step, being able to compete against the Baltimore, the Milwaukee's, the uh, the Missouri's, having beaten those teams. Now you're right. Now they have to get into that playoff mode, that that you know that playoff concept. And I think you're right. I think that they need to take these next couple of games against the Baltimore, the Milwaukee's, and treat that 
as a playoff game, as a playoff series, to be able to have their mindset proper for the upcoming playoffs. Now, somewhat of a playoff atmosphere in St. Louis, even though it's unlikely the ambush are going to the playoffs this season, almost 7,000 fans there on Saturday, Saturday afternoon at the Family Arena, and they were treated to a terrific game as well. It was uh, St. Louis also coincidentally held a 10-6 halftime lead against Milwaukee, but the Wave were able to come back very strongly. Two excellent power play ball goals by Carlos Munoz to get things tied up before Milwaukee was able to pull away in the fourth quarter and maintain that half-game lead against Baltimore over Baltimore for first place. It was very interesting watching the chat. We had a lot of fans especially from Baltimore in watching the chat on in the chat room watching the game online on Saturday afternoon a lot of Baltimore fans rooting for St. Louis and so that they could grab top spot away from the wave it was definitely a, a terrific game and a terrific performance by the ambush even in defeat yeah you got to give you know, first off you know congrats to to the ambush and owner Andrew Haynes and head coach Daryl Duran uh, on a tremendous first year so far not so much on the field, but off the field. They've done a, they've done a great job in averaging over five, 6,000 fans a game there, real crowds, a tremendous atmosphere there, another great crowd there on Saturday afternoon. A little bit tough, you know, on the field, but again, you know, with the expansion process comes paying your dues and, you know, and, and learning the ropes. You know, from an expansion standpoint, having Daryl Duran in the mix has helped them alleviate a lot of those anxieties, but still, they're still an expansion team. Milwaukee, what can you say? You know, uh, top of the top of the uh, the table so far. Another big win. You know, they haven't had. Let's be honest here. They haven't had the luxury of playing Pennsylvania as many times as the Blast have. Um, so I think their record even is even more impressive due to the fact that they've had to face a little bit stiffer competition this year. So um, it'll be interesting to see how things end up. You know, Keith Tozer again, year in year out. You know, a top top team in the league, um, but it'll be interesting to see how things finish up. There was a fascinating moment. I think it was in the first half of that of the game where you actually saw both coaches come down towards the center of their benches. And there's the two benches, as far as I can tell, at Family Arena are separated just by one divide. There isn't a little gap like you have for the NHL teams where you have like this the little the the between the benches reported that's just this and you saw Daryl Duran lean over one side of the bench and Keith Tozer lean over the other side. And they're just sitting there chatting away in the middle uh, in the middle of the game I, I really wanted to know what was going on in that conversation <laughs> well i mean again i mean i've known keith for 25 years now and you know and he's he's a consummate professional consummate gentleman um but he's also very very intense i don't know daryl as well it, it, seemed, like it, it seemed like it was a very convivial chat they were enjoying themselves well i'm not sure what convivial means but if that means that there was a <laughs> <laughs> if that means that it was a cordial conversation i yes, doubt that, it that's that's good no no it definitely looked that oh, way. okay well maybe it was uh, very you know, interesting I, I can tell you that you know knowing even knowing daryl not as well as i know keith he's very very intense in the middle of a game I'm not sure how convivial <laughs> the conversation was. <laughs> well, as far as the the wave are concerned, obviously they they want to I think hold off the blast. They want to hold on to that number one seed just because I I think there's that mental edge. We've won the regular season championship. We control. We will have control. We'll have game two in our backyard, potentially a game three if it comes to that in our on our home turf. Obviously, the Wave so far this season, the only team that remains undefeated on their home turf. So that's a big, that would be a big advantage for them if they're hosting game two of the semifinal series and potentially game two and game three of the championship series. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it was a big win for them to be able to come back and put in that kind of second half to, to squeeze out the ambush. Yeah, no, I mean, obviously winning the regular season overall championship is, is uh, you know, is a big deal for all the teams. Um, it's bragging rights. Um, you, you know, even though there's not that much of an advantage come playoff time because you are playing essentially two games plus the mini game if needed. Um, but I'm sure that all the teams, you know, in, now it's essentially down to, to Baltimore and Milwaukee would want to win that. Um, so, yeah, it's something that they're striving for. Obviously, Milwaukee's got a very tough two-game trip to uh, to the east this weekend, playing Syracuse and Rochester. Um, I remember last year, they I think they split going in there. 
Obviously, it's meaningful games for both those teams. Math- uh, mathematically, Rochester still alive. Still alive, mathematically. Um, so, you know what? It should be a, it's going to be a tough trip for the Wave. We'll see how they fare. Now, you say still alive mathematically for Rochester, and of course they are. Certainly looks as though, however, that it's shaping up to be the top four that we have now with Missouri and Syracuse both only both needing two more wins to clinch their places in the postseason. This weekend, we see both of those teams taking on, as we mentioned earlier, Syracuse taking on Milwaukee and Missouri taking on Baltimore. Now, as it lines up, those would be the first round matchups currently with Milwaukee, one against four with Syracuse, Baltimore, two against three with Missouri. It's going to be absolutely fascinating to see what transpires on Friday and Sunday. Yeah, it should be some fun viewing this weekend, um, you know, for, for, for the indoor soccer world. Um, again, it could be a playoff preview. Uh, at the very least, it's going to be two, I, I think it'd be two very competitive games. Or we could see the deck get completely reshuffled again. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing set in stone right now. One through four are are wide open. We, you know, we could see Milwaukee, you know, being overtaken by Baltimore. We could see Syracuse or overtaken Missouri. Who knows? Um, but again, it'll be, it'll make for some interesting watching this weekend. Well, to talk about that and his team's current season, we had the chance to talk with the Missouri Comets' Leo Gibson, and that interview will be coming up just after this break. Well, we're very pleased to be joined now by the Missouri Comets' Leo Gibson. Leo, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Thanks for having me. Well, we saw last at the end of last season that you were moving into an attacking role, and that's where you spent you're the most of the season this year. It seems like you're having a lot of fun. How much fun is it part to be part of the Comets' really potent attack? Oh, it's um, it, it's fun. I mean, just being a part of a. Uh you know, it doesn't matter what his defense or offense. It's just it's just an amazing time to be a part of that team, you know, um, and playing with great group of guys who are so talented and, and 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 gifted. So it's been a joy being a part of it, whether it's offense or defense or wherever I'm, I'm needed the most. So um, yeah. This is your fourth season, I believe, with the Comets, and it seems as though over that time, the chemistry between the guys that have been there for a while has really started to develop. In particular, yourself and uh, uh, Vahid Asadpour. It seems like whenever you're scoring a goal, he's providing the assist and vice versa. What it is? What is it that you guys have got going on this season? <laughs> yeah, I think you, you're right. You know, this is our fourth season with the team, and. And it's not just Vahid and I, but almost the entire team, about maybe 80% to 85%. I mean, good percentage of our team has been together for the past four, four years. So um, that has helped our chemistry. Um, I think that's a great thing that Thomas has done, just maintaining um, a good amount of us and just adding maybe one or two guys every season. And, and it really helps our chemistry and the guys who they add on come in and, and try to, to be a part of it and it doesn't take long for them to adjust because you know there are more of us who have been there and the one or two guys who join we help them adjust and be a part of uh, what we are doing and what we are trying to do or whatever the coaches are trying to, to accomplish so um, I mean from Danny Walkman to, to Harris to um, the key Lucas Sosa myself I think we have played together over the past three to four years and, and even longer, you know, even Byron. I mean, it's just been incredible to have the same group of guys that you have known for almost four years now and just understand the way they play, the way they, they like things and don't like things. And, 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 I mean, we have become more than a team. You know, we more kind of like a family. So it really helps us uh, on the field as well. It's, it certainly seems that way, that it, you guys are very close-knit. We see the, the pictures that pop up on Twitter when you guys are out on the road. It seems like a group of guys that enjoys being around each other, enjoys having fun together. Definitely. We have, it's funny, we have one of the most um, incredible, I don't know, I, I mean, I talked to very few guys around the league, and our team seems to be so united and so fun-loving because, we, like you said, we've been together for four years and, 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 and 
we have a great group of guys. I mean, there are guys with great sense of humor that, you know, it, it, we love to win. And we try our best. We go out there and work hard to win. And sometimes if it doesn't go our way, we understand. We find a way to, to just rise above it and enjoy um, the gift that we have, the opportunity to be doing what we're doing. And, and you know, and guys like Sosa and, and Lucas and, 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 and Brian Harris, I mean, these guys bring a whole different energy. I mean, they are fun-loving. They are always fun to be around. So it really helps us. Um, in this season and the previous season to just stay focused and stay dedicated regardless if we're winning or losing because, you know, the atmosphere is, is always great at practice. It's always always amazing at team dinner and, 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 and even when we're playing, you know. When things are not going well, we come together, those guys are there, and just be like, hey, guys, listen, you know, let's see what we can do. And they always bring some kind of a positive comment and encouragement and, it's fun. I, 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 this is one of the best years I've had on a team where, you know, there's more joy to it, just, you know, enjoying the guys on the team. So, now You guys need a couple more wins to clinch your place in the playoffs at the end of the season. What was the biggest thing you learned from last season's playoff run, beating the Wave before falling to the Blast in the championship series? I think one of the things that we learned is, you know, it doesn't matter... Uh, what the score is, what matters is the end of the game. Um, we we did that last year where we started well and ended poorly, or we started poorly and ended well. So, I mean, even the beginning of the season, we did it again in the first game where we were doing extremely well, and then we fell short in the end. So that has been a constant reminder from last year to the first game in the season that, listen, it doesn't matter what the score is. What matters is the final whistle in the game. So that has kept us focused and more disciplined and just to kind of finish up things. And, and you know, like you said, we have a couple of wins to, to put ourselves in the playoff position. And we looking and hoping to take advantage of the many home games that we have left to put ourselves in that position for the postseason. Now, one of those home games comes up this Sunday. It's a big one against the Baltimore Blast. They were very impressive in beating you guys earlier this season, took a 14-6 to win. What did you take away from that game, and how are you approaching Sunday? Well, um, yeah, I mean, Baltimore is an incredible team, and, and, and we are excited to play them again. After that loss to them, we thought we were in it, and somehow we lost control, and and they, they took it. And, you know, um, Sunday game is going to be different because we have been very privileged to have a couple of days off. Um, we are hungry. We are, we are we really, really um, um, in a position where everybody's healthy and, you know, we want him to play because we haven't played within a week. Um, we are going to go against Baltimore like we would do against Milwaukee or anybody else. We are going to, to start well and hoping to finish well. Um, we are going to be disciplined on offense and defense, and, and just we, we look into work hard because we feel like, hey, you know what, we are well rested, we have all the energy we need, and the last time, you know, we could come up with anything because of the things that we went through, but it didn't matter. We went on the field, we played well, we were in it, we were leading. I think we led or they led us, and we came back, and, and it was a close game until the end, and, and they took the lead, and uh, this time we're just excited to be playing at home considering the way we have been playing. I mean, it's been incredible soccer, and we're excited to play a team who plays similar to how we play, who have similar skills level, uh, discipline, and we, we, we hoping to work hard enough to, to overcome them this time. So. The thing that we've noticed about the Comets is that offensively, you guys have so many different weapons. Is that the biggest reason why you're a threat to win the MISL championship this season? You know, um, I think we are gifted. I mean, like you said, we, we have guys that can score. It's not just Byron, you know. Um, it's not just he or myself. Guys are stepping up now and, and taking responsibility and being more disciplined and, and utilizing the chances. And I think it got us in a good position, you know. And, and if we keep up that, I think we can definitely – uh, be back in the finals, and we can, no doubt, we can definitely um, get it for the first time since the since the Comets uh, got back in the league. And, uh, I mean, guys are scoring from defense, you know. It's incredible to see how Harris is playing and how Sosa is playing. 
and um, how Cody Andrew is playing, Robert. I mean, these young guys are taking responsibility now. They are playing with freedom. They are taking risk, and it's it's paying off for us. So, um, you know, it's nice to just be able to spread that among everybody and not just rely on Byron or, or Vahid or Harris alone, you know. So, um Definitely. I think that give us a, that give us a huge advantage. Well, Leo, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Best of luck on Sunday. We're all really looking forward to the game. And best of luck for the rest of the season. Hey, my pleasure. Thank you guys so much for having us. And I uh, and, uh, look forward to talking to you whenever again. Obviously very interesting to talk to Leo ahead of the, this game Sunday against the Baltimore Blast. That should be a fascinating one. 10 past 4 Eastern Time, 10 past 3 Central Time kickoff at the Independence Event Center. We mentioned earlier, this is a potential playoff matchup as things currently stand. Baltimore definitely got the better of the Comets last time out. Took a 14-6 to victory at Baltimore Arena. And it was impressive to me in that game how well the Blast shut down the Comets' attack. Obviously, the Comets, they've gotten re-energized. The last time out, they looked absolutely spectacular against St. Louis. Is this a question of, can they do it against what obviously has been the league's most immovable objects so far this season in the Blast's offense? Well, I believe the last time that the Comets were in Baltimore was on the heels of that uh, torturous drive from Rochester down. So they Definitely true. Uh, they not to make excuses for them, um, but they got into Baltimore late in the day, so it was a little bit of a tumultuous trip in and uh, a little bit taxing on the players, so they, they may have ran out of steam there. Now, going back to last year's finals when Baltimore beat them two straight, um, I think that you know that this may play on the psyche of the Comets. Should they be meeting in the playoffs, I think the Comets need to get a win here to, to sort of set their mind on the proper uh, on the proper course here, because you know because the blast has uh, you're beating the comets obviously in the pl- in the championships last year and they're meeting this year, so I think it's a it's a big game from a comets perspective. I definitely agree with you, and if you throw in the fact that Missouri could they they can they're still in the run they're still in the running here for the number two seed if they win against Baltimore closes the gap on that number two spot to one game and then who knows what can happen down the stretch Mm -hmm. then uh, but certainly I I definitely agree with your point big psychological game for Missouri they're coming in they're rested they've had a chance to really have a good week of a good couple of weeks of practice they've got to be feeling good after beating the ambush the way they did last time out and obviously with Leo Gibson with Vahid Asadpour with all of the other offensive weapons you feel as though there's got to be a way for them to break down the, the Blast defense, as good as the Blast defense has been this year. I've said it before. This team can be scary good. Yeah. Uh, you know, when they're firing on all cylinders, I don't think there's a more prolific team from an offensive standpoint in the league. They're fun to watch. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll see which team shows up. I think, you know, head coach Vlatko is going to start getting his team into into a playoff mode playoff mindset coming starting with this game uh, but again they're they're really a, a scary team and they're really fun to watch now we talked about a playoff mindset earlier in the broadcast especially about Syracuse and we mentioned their game against the Milwaukee Wave this which comes up on Friday night this is a very big game for both teams as well Milwaukee obviously they could be tied for first place after Thursday night when Baltimore visits St. Louis and psychologically they want to hold on to that Syracuse I thought Syracuse was very competitive played a very very good game when they visited US Cellular Arena last time out the, the final score I think slightly misleading because Milwaukee was able to tack on a few extra goals at the end but I think Syracuse has definitely got a chance in front of a really good home crowd in, in front in its own building to kind of reverse things from last week and get that get that big playoff win get that psychological edge that you're going to need going to the playoffs you almost did it against baltimore if you can do it against milwaukee then suddenly it's game one by when march rolls around well i think that they're obviously 
capable of beating any team in the league. Uh, I'm going to ask you a question. Has Syracuse beaten Milwaukee in their history? I do not believe that's the case. This, okay, so, this would be a first. So that, you know, again, that's one of those barriers that I think a team has to climb um, before they can be, at, you know, at a certain level. They've obviously shown that they can beat Missouri. They've obviously shown that they can win in Baltimore, in Missouri. I think that they need to have, again, from a psychological aspect, to be able to say they can play with any team in the league, they have to beat a Milwaukee. And what better time be for them that it essentially would clinch a playoff spot for a great home crowd Friday night. I think that I think the timing is right for Syracuse to do very, very well this Friday. Certainly should be a terrific game on Friday night. Unfortunately, it's going to be the only game this Friday night because we do have a postponement that was announced on Wednesday. The Pennsylvania Roll Santander Arena it seems as though they've had a little bit of issues with a power outage, which caused the arena to flood. The ice, apparently, at the hockey rink caused a lot of damage. It means they won't be able to play the game this Friday. As we're recording this, we're still waiting to find out an updated, an updated, uh, an updated date for that game to be made up, but it will be made up against the Rochester Lancers. Stay tuned to the MISL website. We'll have, there, there will be news posted as soon as we know it so that you can uh, make sure that you're there for what I think would have been a very entertaining Raw Lancers game. These are two teams that right now are finding ways to score, finding ways to entertain. Yeah, I mean, you... So you said it all. Um, unfortunately, they had a power outage there at Santander Arena. Uh, the ice melted, causing... Uh, I talked to uh, building general manager Zane Colleagues um, at length last night, this morning. Um, unfortunately, you know, it's caused a lot of problems there where the building will not be ready for, for the match on Friday. So uh, we hope to have a rescheduled uh, ma- uh, date in mind uh, by the end of the day today. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, both teams are playing better. Rochester, obviously, with Mark Sotilli, the uh, the 42-year-old Rookie of the Year the candidate. Me- the, the mechanic well, is, you know the, what? is yeah, the nickname. That's great. I think that's dubbed. a great story. And, you know, Mark's done a tremendous job in his in his uh, um, last four or five games with the Lancers. And then, obviously, Pennsylvania getting their first win against uh, the St. Louis Ambush a couple of weeks back. Um, you know, playing a lot better. Uh, it's going to be an interesting matchup whenever they face each other. The, the rules uh, announcer, Charlie Flo, coming up with the mechanic nickname. Uh, definitely an appropriate one. Definitely uh, definitely does a nice job on the rules broadcasts over there. We won't get to hear him this Friday night, but we will get to hear him again soon, I'm sure. Also, now to kick off the, kick off the weekend... That we do have a game Thursday night, later today, as the St. Louis Ambush hosts the Baltimore Blast. This potentially could be a trap game for the Blast. I don't think it will be because they've got enough time between Thursday and Sunday to kind of refocus on the Comets. But the way St. Louis played last time out, in front of their home crowd, if they get another big home crowd again... They're going to feel elevated. They're going to feel lifted. They're f- after the way they played against Milwaukee, I think they're going to feel confident that they can play with any team in this. They can play with the Blast. Well, minus their one game against the Missouri Comets, I believe was their second home game of the year. Uh, the Comets are a whole... I'm sorry. The Ambush are a whole different team. At, at home, home. At home. At yes, home. they are. Um, so, obviously, you know, I don't think Baltimore, obviously with, a, with an experienced great coach like a Danny Kelly, is going to be looking too far ahead. Uh, but obviously, if they do, they're in for a rude awakening. So I expect a really good, entertaining game. Um, y- you know, uh, the ambush played in Baltimore a couple weeks ago and was not a very good show. I believe they lost 14-2, to two, only scored a goal. But uh, I expect a very different ambush team at home uh, th- uh, Thursday night. And we'll see how that one ends up. Well, the, the, I think the big incentive here for Baltimore is win this game put pressure on Milwaukee to match you on Friday night as they go into Syracuse to, to hold on to their lead. If you can go into that game, win there, create a tie for first place, then suddenly there's pressure on Milwaukee to win and, and maintain that head advantage as it would be in a horse race right now. It's, uh, it certainly could be a fascinating one. Yeah, I don't think, you know, I don't think teams want to look too far ahead I mean, you can't in this league yeah you know i mean the, the, i've used it before and one of my adages here on any given sunday is the old nfl adage on any given night if you're not playing your top game anything can happen and i don't think baltimore will be looking past past the ambush well you mentioned any given sunday and the the we have two games on sunday we already mentioned one of them with missouri hosting baltimore but we also have 
Milwaukee Way finishing up their road trip against the Rochester Lancers. At this time last year, was the Rochester was really starting to get over the hump, and they took their first win against Milwaukee. At home... Terrific. Very similar scenario. Very similar scenario, and it was a terrific contest. Yeah. Um, for everything that I remember is certainly a huge moment for the Lancers franchise. Any chance we see a repeat this weekend? You know what? I wouldn't put anything past it. Um, you know, it's obviously Rochester, should Syracuse lose to the Wave on Friday, the game will even have more meaning for the Lancers as, you know, I mean, it's not sealed until, until it's sealed. Yeah. Um, I think should Syracuse win, it may sort of deflate um, the Lancers, although I don't believe it will because they'll be playing in front of that raucous crowd at the Blue Cross great, Arena. Great crowd at the Blue Cross Arena. You know what? Again. They've done a tremendous job. Rich Randall and you know, and Soccer Sam and the entire staff up there do a tremendous job. For any soccer fan, I think it's, you know, if you ever have a chance to go watch a, a Lancer production from opening, opening the doors until the end of the game, it's a must-have. So, again, anything can happen. Uh, it should be a great match. I'm still really intrigued by the Mark Sotilli story. Um, and we'll see how he fares. Hopefully he'll fare a little bit better than he did in in, um, in Milwaukee, where he also could have sued for non-support. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, all of those games this weekend are, will be available on YouTube, as always. We hope you join us. Jump into the chat room. I may be, um, I'll likely be there to chat along with you. If you have any questions, feel free to email us at mislweekly at uslsoccer.com. And uh, Chris, thank you again for joining me. As always a pleasure, Nicholas, and for the fans, you will not find a more devoted soccer person than, than Mr. Nicholas Murray. It is unbelievable. His wife is a saint for putting up with what he does because this guy is like 24-7 constant soccer. Well, so. you, you say that. My wife is going down to watch the women's national team in <laughs> Boca Raton on Saturday and abandoning me. So. Well, uh, I'm telling you, <laughs> it's amazing. But no, I mean, there's nobody that works harder than Nicholas, so... Kudos to, to Nicholas and, uh, and and what he does for the for the MISL. Well, thank you to producer Seth for putting this together, as always. Definitely appreciate that. And uh, thank you guys for listening. We definitely hope you enjoy the weekend's action, and we'll see you we'll see you in the chat rooms as the games progress. Until then, bye for now. <laughs>